Hey everybody, welcome back. We're on part five of our case study. I don't know how many parts this will take, but I'm trying to not go over um, 10 minutes, eight to 10 minutes per each video. But anyway, welcome back. If you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. My name is Pippa and I share knowledge about business analysis career. We are working through a, a real life project case study so that you can start to understand exactly at each stage or at each step of the project what the project approach is and what the business analyst approach is for this live project hypothetical um, looking at migrating from an in-house CRM system to the cloud. So if you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you are updated whenever I upload videos, especially for this playlist um, so that you keep up to date with each part of the case study. Okay, so in today's video, we're looking at the business analyst's approach. We have covered the project approach already and the SDLC. But what, what exactly is business analyst doing? I have an existing video about the BA approach which goes into more detail of what we are doing at each stage. But for the purpose of this video, I'll just uh, give a summary of the BA approach. The first step, now there are six steps within the BA approach. The first step is to investigate this situation. Now, no matter what project you are placed on, um, as a business analyst, the first thing you need to do is investigate the situation. And there are various um, techniques that we apply as business analysts at these stages. The second stage is to consider the perspective. By considering the perspective, I mean um, knowing who your stakeholders are and knowing what point of view they have on the project. Everybody sees things in different ways and um, processes and systems have impact to different stakeholders in different ways as well. So as business analysts, we need to be able to first identify who these stakeholders are, what perspectives or what impacts their processes and their tasks have on our project. Uh, what's more important to them sort of thing. There are various techniques as well that we use within this um, step. Now, the third one is to analyze the needs, part of your requirements as well. Um, and with this, we're looking at identifying any existing issues or pain points that the stakeholders might be experiencing. Now, the fourth one is to evaluate the option, which is sort of related to um, some aspect within the SDLC stage. What options are we are available for us to explore to meet these needs? So we will, as business analysts, we will evaluate these various cloud-based systems uh, and select the one that best meets the requirements. Now, the fifth one is to then define the requirements. And in this step, the business analyst will define the functional and non-functional. Although at investigating the situation stage, we will have some high level requirements, which will then determine our options analysis, which is the fourth stage where we are evaluating the options available to meet the needs, the pain points, which we've looked at. But in number five, the fifth stage, we'll now start to go into lower level details of the functionalities of the system. Um, this is where we define the requirements. Um, I don't want you to mix these up because in order to evaluate the options, you need requirements. But I'm stating here now that number four is evaluate options and number five is define requirements. However, in the initial stages, you have your needs, your pain points, your issues and, and high level requirements, which in the agile sense will be um, considered your epics and your user stories. Whereas number five, define your requirements this is where you now have your acceptance criteria and all the um, non-functional and detail, more detailed requirements um, and as business analysts we need to ensure that the requirements are clear they're complete they're consistent um, and they meet the needs of all the stakeholders now the fifth the sixth stage for the BA approach is to now deliver the change obviously this has some linking with our project approach in delivering the changes will involve testing um, deployment training right so the BA aspect is to deliver that change so we're working closely with the development team here to ensure that these requirements are implemented correctly in the new system before we go live, before we test, right? We're really, really working closely with the dev team. Um, and then we will now oversee the testing, the deployment and the training phases so that we ensure that this system is fully functional, is efficient and is user friendly. So this is a summary of what the BA approach consists of now. 
um, in our next video, let's really, really go into detail of each stage. Um, we're on part five, so this series will probably be about 12 parts long um, because we will cover each stage, stage one to six of the BA approach. What are we doing? together with content that is relating and referring to our project case study, moving, uh, migrating from in-house to the cloud, okay? Don't forget, just keep this project in, your, in mind. We're exploring, we're looking at the techniques, the approaches, right? They will start to come together when we apply it to the project case study, right? Good, good. So again, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share this content. I know it's very, very valuable and it will really, really help because I'm, I've got comments uh, asking me to do some real life, give some real examples. So this is why I'm doing this. I'm really feeding you. <laughs> I'm feeding you at this point. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Look out for part six and I'll see you then. Peace.